Get all your yawns it's, out now. Jamie, you need to Get just accept it. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Foster the Meatballs. I don't like meatballs. Yeah, I think they're fine. You can get really good meatballs, but sometimes you get them and they taste like rubber. It's just a ball of meat. You see a hamburger. Hamburger is just a bigger ball of meat. I don't get the allure of meatballs. I like them. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Foster the Meatball, a channel all about... Board games. And... Board game things. Exactly. My name is Jamie. I'm Jeff. And we're here today to do another overview and review video <laughs> for you. Today's overview and review is on Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig coming from Stonemeyer and Bezier Games. You match, kind of. The blues. You match, kind of. We all match. We all match. But this game was designed by Ben Rossett and Matthew O'Malley. O'Malley the, the alley, alley cat. cat. We don't even need a script. We, we a just script. know what we're doing. Exactly. This game was sent to us for review from Stonemeyer. So thank you to Stonemeyer for sending us this game. Much appreciated. We are going to do as we usually do. We're going to start with an overview and go into our review. That all rhymed. We will do as we usually do. We are going to start with an overview and then into our review. I'm like Dr. Seuss. I wouldn't say that. You ready to dive into that, that there overview? Here we go. Between two castles of Mad King Ludwig. The king demands a castle. You are a world-renowned master builder who has been asked by Mad King Ludwig to help design his castles. Projects of such significance require the expertise of more than one person. So for each assignment, you are paired with another master builder to execute your grandiose plans. Will your planning and collaborative skills be enough to design the most impressive castle in the world? Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig is a tile drafting game in which each tile is a room and a castle. You work together with a player on your left to design one castle and with a player on your right to design another castle. On each turn, you select two tiles from your hand Reveal them, then work with your partners to place one of your selected tiles into each of your two castles. At the end of the game, each castle is scored. Your personal final score is the lower of the scores of the two castles you help design, and the player with the highest final score wins the game. To win, you have to share your attention and your devotion between two castles. I haven't mentioned this to you yet. Oh, secrets. Secret secrets. I don't know if I... Every time you say this game's name, Especially when you say Mad King Ludwig. Mad King Ludwig. I think of the Koopa from Mario 3. Ludwig von Koopa. Ludwig von Koopa. Can I show you one? Yep. Is it the little turtle guy? Well, there's lots of little turtles. Do you remember this dude? This is Ludwig von Koopa. Ludwig von Koopa. Anytime, anytime, anyway. Anytime, anytime. Anytime she says Ludwig, I think of Ludwig von Koopa. This game is, as I just described it, it is exactly that. It is for three to seven players, though there is a two-player variant. It is for ages 10 plus and takes around 45 to 60 minutes to play. That, I don't believe. We can rip off a game of this yeah, we didn't. pretty quickly. We've but... played it at two player, three player, four player. Yes, we've played this now at two players, three players, four players. That's it. And that's it. We don't know any other people. And I think all the games were lasted relatively the same amount Although, of time. Although I'm wondering if it's because we are just randomly, <laughs> we're just like, Whoop! and placing tiles. Yeah, we need to get better at the cooperative aspect of this game, I think. Yeah, we'll talk about that within our review, I'm sure. In a nutshell, this is a semi-co-op tile placement game. You're building out a castle between you and a partner, and then you and another partner. So you got two castles going on. Mm -hmm. And you're, dra it's, you're really drafting tiles. 100%. Each tile type scores in a different way. Mm -hmm. And it comes with a little reference guide that shows you how that works. And at the end, whoever has the most points from their lowest scoring castle wins. Yep. Tile drafting, a tile placement. Castle building. Semi-co-op, tile drafting, tile placement. Yeah. How many times we got to say it? It's semi-co-op, semi -co tile, tile drafting, drafting tile, tile placement. placement. Mad King. Ludwig. Koopa. Koopa von Ludwig. Koopa von Ludwig. No, it's Ludwig von Koopa. Ludwig von Koopa. So, Level 7 of Mario 3. You would know that. What are you singing? I don't know. Let's <laughs> jump into our review, starting with the theme. The theme.
game is, just as I had already said, you have been assigned to build a castle by the Mad King Ludwig. You are building castles. You are a master builder building castles. Yeah. That's the theme. I think the theme's pretty cool. I don't know. You could probably paste on something else, but yeah. like thematically, it makes sense that you are a builder. You are given rooms, essentially, yep. to build out a castle with. Rooms and outdoor spaces. Mm -hmm. So I think it all fits. Yeah, and like thematically as well, it does make sense that it would be semi co-op because you're not going to be building a castle by yourself. What are yeah. you, Superman? Yeah. You want to build a castle with help from other people, but you want your castle to be the best. Exactly. Yeah, makes sense. I don't really know what else to say about the theme. No, like it's Jeff said, I do think a lot of different themes could be pasted on this. Like you could be a dungeon builder. You could be a something something. Mm -hmm. And it would still work out just as well. So that's the theme. It has a really short overview of a theme. Yeah, and I think the reason for that is the fact that it is that simplistic. Exactly. You are a builder building a castle and you are the tiles are the room. And we should mention we have never played Between Two Cities. Mm -mm or Castles of Mad King Ludwig, which mm -hmm. this game is a combination of those two games. Mm -hmm. I think Between Two Cities is a Stonemaier game and Castles of Mad King Ludwig is a Bezier game. I would like to play each of them because maybe that would help me to appreciate this game a little bit more. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I honestly, I don't know anything about either of yeah. those two separate iterations. But yeah, it could be me interesting either. to have the context. Yeah. So let's jump into components. First of all, I do want to say I do really love the artwork on the box. I yep. think it's very well done. It's very blue. Obviously, we really like teal and blue. Let's start off with the rule book. So as per usual, Stonemeyer typically has this very unique rule book paper. Feel yeah, like yeah, no, 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 exactly. It's I like, know I exactly know. what you it's mean. It's almost like it's weaved. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. So it's, it's not like, like glossy. It's like a plasticky feel. Yeah, I don't know. It's good quality though. The rule book is very good. I'll talk about that later. Right now we're just talking about the quality, but it's got- Like I feel like you could spill there. water on that and it wouldn't, it yeah. would just like- It'd be like, bead. not today. It would beat off of it. Next up you get a scoring pad which is what you use when you score the game. The coolest yeah. thing about the scoring pad is that you get to name your castles so like if Jeff and I had a castle we would give our castle a name and then if this person and I had a castle we would give that she castle a name. She says that and every time the name is Jeff Jam. Jeff Jam. <laughs> Yep, every time that's true that is true okay so she's like it's so cool never actually uses it no. probably because i named the castle boob fart or something we could have called the castle that i'd be fine with that next up we have one two three four five six seven castle tokens one of them is nsfw looks like a wiener it does can i say that because it does i won't show that one i'll have to blur it out <laughs> Anyways, it comes with <laughs> it comes with seven wooden castle tokens. So the castle tokens are just what signifies which stack of tiles are yours. So each player gets their own little castle token. Mm -hmm. I like that it comes with a light lavendery purple one. Yeah, they're good quality wooden castles. I really appreciate that Stonemaier always has really good trays. A hundred percent comes with next actually. Not yet. Everybody wait. Next, it comes with reference cards, which is another thing that Stonemeyer does very well. Yep. Really, I'm not so as sure about Bezier because the only Bezier games that we've played are the Silver Series and they do have reference cards. Yep. But I don't know about the rest of their games, but Stonemeyer usually does have really good reference yep. cards. So they tell you exactly where the tiles can be placed, how they score, what their bonuses are. So every player gets one of those and that is fabulous. Then it comes with two trays <laughs> filled to the brim with tiles. And what Jeff was just saying is that what we really appreciate game trays. Yeah. And it is so helpful in keeping everything where it should be so yeah. that everything isn't just loosey goosey willy nilly in the box. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate when game publishers consider this sort of extra effort. Yeah. Trays, recessed player boards. Yep. Like I understand things Reference cost guides. a little bit more. Yeah. Upgraded. It just makes me think about like Lost Runes of Arnak where yeah. everything is just in the box yeah. and it's like so disorganized and overwhelming. Like yeah. this just makes my brain feel good. I just like when things are have a place and everything are organized. Everything is just so. In each of these trays, you have many, many tiles. 
apparently you just can't get into them. In the yellow tray, in the yellow corner, you have all of your specialty tiles, your specialty rooms. So when are these? those are the, the attendants, yeah, the attendants, they get put in the throne room. Those never came up. Yep, we've used them. I've used them. I didn't tell you that this was the bonus that we got once and I just put it in the room. But yeah. anyways, within the yellow tray, you have all of your special tiles. Basically, you get a special tile when you achieve three of the same type of room yeah. in your castle. Then you get some kind of a bonus. So in the yellow tray, there's fountains, towers, grand foyers, and royal attendants. So they really usually just have like an added bonus type of way of scoring. Fountain is just five victory points. So you don't have to do any other effort except lay that tile down and you're good to go. The yellow tray also comes with bonus cards, which you get when you hit three utility rooms. Yep. Once again, just more ways to score points for the end of the game. Yep. That's everything that comes in the little yellow tray. All of these pieces are like thick cardboard pieces. Yeah, component wise, it is Good. Component wise, it is good. In the red tray, I should have left the lid on before I took it out of the box. Put it anywhere. Very good. In the red tray, you have more cardboard tiles. You have your throne room. So uh, between each player, they'll get a throne room, which each of them have unique scoring abilities yep. on them. And then everything else that comes in the red tray are your tiles to build your room. So how the game works is each player gets nine tiles. They get to look through them. They select two, one for each of their castles, and then they pass their stack of tiles on to the next person. That's the drafting element. All of these tiles are shuffled in. There's different kinds of rooms. There's living rooms, outdoor spaces, hallways, or I should say corridors, utility rooms, basements, sleeping rooms. Did I already say food rooms? Nope. Food rooms. Yeah. And if I forgot any, then that's that's yeah. okay too. On each tile, there is a little bit of artwork. It shows you what type of room it is. It shows you kind of what their little banner is, whether it's swords or mirrors or whatever. And then it shows you their unique scoring ability. Usually the scoring ability comes from being attached to something or having something else within your castle. You find the two that will work best for your two castles, pass it along, and then you continue going until there's only one tile left and that's the end of the first round. These tiles are so easy to pick up because each side you can push down so that you can easily pick them up. Oh yeah. I always just do the this. Yeah, but, but you don't either. even need to. You can press down on one side and they just pop up. So they did that specifically to make it easy to pick them all out. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. The artwork is nice. I don't really pay attention to the artwork. No. The one thing that we really wish that we will talk about more in the critique, it's difficult to see what r the room type is. Yeah. So one thing that we would love to see is that instead of a white border, it would be the actual color mm -hmm. of the room border. But other than that, that's literally everything that comes with this game. Very simple, and all packs away nice and neat. Also, all of our games come with cat hair yeah. and dog hair. That's added in by us. And all of the things. Just a little bit of extra magic. Bonus components, we call it. Those are the components. Let's move into the rules. So I did read the rule book and I watched a video on how to play this. I think I watched, oh, I watched Before You Play. Yep. They have a great video, so go and watch it. Rule book, super simple. The premise of the game and how you actually play the game is pretty easy. There's Very, not yeah. a lot of rules. Where the rules come in is how scoring is scoring. How to maximize your points basically mm -hmm. with each room type. You not only have to look at like the type of room, but then you have to see, well, what kind of rooms needs to be around this and what does connected to mean yeah. and what are the white squares versus the black squares? So it'll show you like what tile you have as a white square and what needs to be around it is highlighted in black, which is something that we didn't pick up on necessarily right away in our first game. Yep. There's a lot of iconography. The reference cards are only iconography, but the rule book does go through what everything means and it gives you examples. So yeah. I think the rule book is... Yeah, mechanically good. the game is very simple. Yeah. You draft a tile, you pick two tiles, you place two tiles, pass. Pass. Where the difficulty comes in is to Jamie's point. What do all the tiles do? When do I get a bonus tile? Yep. What do the bonus tiles do? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. This strategy. The strategy of the game is yep. where the, the difficulty can come into play. This game is a giant puzzle that 
can make your brain hurt a little bit because mm -hmm. it's like there's so much going on you're working on two castles so you need to figure out like we're still talking about the rules like okay what are the placement rules of this thing and yep. when i get three rooms you have to then remember i get a bonus when i hit three rooms and sometimes you don't realize that you've hit three rooms yep. so there's like little things that you need to kind of keep in your head and not just focus on what you're doing there's just a lot going on yeah and on. i mean that that would become muscle memory i think the more I and more so. you play it cuz there are rules where Certain rooms can be placed downstairs. Yeah. Others can't. Yep. Others can be placed above other rooms. Some can't. Once you discover and uncover what the abilities of each tile are, yeah. it would be smooth sailing. It is simple. The game, yep. you take two tiles, you pass them, you place them. Yep. That's it. Mechanically very Mechanically simple. Mechanically very simple. It's when you get into the actual... Nuances of the tiles. Exactly. Yep. So those are the rules. I don't think I have anything else to say about those. Do you? Nope. Cool. I don't know if you still wanted this, but... Uh, just leave it close by. Let's put it in your It's printer. kind of a big box in our way. Big so, box, bigger heart. Big box, bigger heart. Have I made that joke before? I feel Probably. like I have. Okay, so gameplay and replayability. Like we said, we've played this at two player, three player, and four player. I think this is actually a game I want to play at higher player counts, which is 100%. which is completely opposite of what I'm normally like. Yeah. Of the three versions that we played, the two player basically just has like you're you're building two castles, one by yourself with Ludwig which you're just, just building it by yourself. And then the other one you're building with the other player. In the two-player game, we should mention, you are playing with Ludwig, drafting the same ways. Ludwig's stack is kind of exchanged between the two people. So in the first round, I would take Ludwig's stack pick two, give one to myself, one to Jamie. Yeah. In round two, Jamie would do that for me. Yeah. So that's kind of how that all worked. It's not a bad way to play the game. Mm -mm. I actually think it worked relatively well because there are some games where Automa and stuff just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I didn't find that in this game, but I do prefer it at higher. I actually parts. like verse. So if I were to rank the two, three, and four player variants of this game, I would definitely put four player at like this would be optimal at four or more then I would put the two player and then I would put the three player and the reason being because yeah, I didn't like the three yeah because with the four player game you and this person can spend time discussing while these two people discuss and then you switch so there's nobody just sitting there yeah. waiting in the three player game so we play this three players with Zach Zach and I would have to discuss our castle and then Jeff would have to wait and yep. then Zach and Jeff would discuss and I would have to wait so less downtime yeah there's way more downtime in the yep. three player game 100% agree. and in the two player game you know you each can work on your own castle by mm -hmm. yourself and then you work on the together castle so, I do think the two player variant is actually kind of somewhat interesting because yeah. you're like, let's just say I'm sitting here, Jamie's across from me, and we have Ludwig to our left. We are playing a cooperative game here mm -hmm. and a competitive game here. Yes, definitely. Which is insanely interesting. Yeah, because the reason for that is, like Jeff said, when you're pulling out the tiles, he's in all of round one, he's choosing what tile I get for this castle. Mm -hmm. So usually you're trying to find what's the best for both. In this situation, Jeff would be like finding what's best for both of his, but being like, I'm going to try and screw I want to screw over yours and Ludwig's castle. Yes. Yeah. So usually in the other variants, you wouldn't have that at yeah. all because you're always trying to optimize your castles. But in the two player, there's more take that, which is kind of nice. Yeah. A nice little twist. Yep. I did um, like it at two player, but we haven't played it at five, six, or seven. No. I think I, I prefer it for, I think I prefer it at six. Five would increase, it would include that element of one person waiting mm. because of the odd number, right? Yep. And so would seven. Yeah. So play it at even so numbers. So I think I think the even number play is key. So two, four, and six. I agree. But yeah. again, we've only played up to four, so I could be wrong on that. But yeah. that's my assumption. With the gameplay too, like we said, we play this very quickly. But I think like we don't put enough thought into what we do. Sometimes with this game, cooperatively. It's cooperatively. We don't. So like I'm picking. Last night we were playing the two player version. So I'm picking. Like, yep, this is for mine and Jeff's castle, and I just go ahead and place it. What you're supposed to do is discuss. Mm -hmm. So there's only maybe one or two times where we even felt like we needed to discuss. Yeah, and I think that's that's an us problem, not a game problem. Yeah, I, I think agree. we try to get too into the efficiency piece of, like, we want our turns to go quickly. There definitely was a lot of instances where 
I would place a tile and be like, I know she would think I should put this here. Mm -hmm. And same for you. You would place one and be like, this is the most optimal way to score points here. Yeah. But we never really discussed it. It was just kind of like, yep, okay, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And that's where a lot of the missing bonuses and stuff come in. Mm -hmm. we, we missed a lot of those triggers. And I think that, yeah, that's definitely an us problem. But if you don't have the mind of the puzzler, then that's going to be a problem for you because you're just like, well, I found this and I know that we need it. So I'm just going to put it here. Whereas somebody who's like super like methodical and puzzly might be like, okay, well this to optimize this needs to go here and you need to put this here. And mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know that our brains always work in that way. Yep. I think it depends on who you play it with. But for yeah, sure. so definitely the player count changes the game. Other than that, the gameplay is very smooth. Where I found the most hiccups is with the iconography. Like what does it mean? We had some trouble understanding what the connected to means and I had to yeah. read that page of the rule book a few times but yeah other than that like I don't really think that many people are going to struggle with the actual gameplay besides the strategic part of it agreed I mean I've never lost this game nope she hasn't so I think my mind does work in a bit more of a puzzly way for these types of things I like to look at the big picture and, and put it all together replayability I think is pretty good actually I agree I was gonna say I think yeah um, where this game should shines again it's it's a very quick puzzly game mm -hmm. it would take a lot of plays for me to be oh. like i'm over this yeah every time it's different every castle is different there's so many tiles yep it's always going to be different so there's also expansions that you can get mm -hmm. with this to enhance the replayability i really don't think there's an issue with replayability if this is nope. the kind of game that you're into i can see you wanting to play this over and over and over again and we always use this reference this is a game that I would want to sit Thank at a cottage, oh. <laughs> have a coffee in the morning, and just do a puzzly game. Yep, definitely. You know, if you got a group of people that you're hanging out with mm -hmm. over the weekend, and yeah, it's just a, it's just a puzzle. Yeah. You're just playing a puzzle game. And I don't think I've, we haven't really played anything like this, so it's relatively no. unique, like yeah. the way the game plays. And like I've played games where you've had to optimize like your little setup, but the semi co-op aspect of it yep. and the fact that you're not necessarily hate drafting, except for in the two player variant mm -hmm. where you can, is a little bit different. Anything else on gameplay and replayability? Nope. Moving into our critiques. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey? Yeah, so... Um... Yeah. <laughs> Got my phone. Each tile has a white border and has color inside of the tile to designate what type of room it is. This game would be improved exponentially for me if the border replicated the color of the room. Basically, we'll have upwards of 10, 12 tiles in your castle. And I have, and it's maybe it's a me thing, I have a hard time to identify what types of rooms are in my castle. Because the bonuses, again, score with three of one type of room. Yeah. You will score a bonus. And I don't know how many times... We've missed it. I've missed it because I'm like looking at my castle and they're all white tiles. And I'm like, oh, I actually do have three orange... Yep. I do have three utility rooms. I do have three parks. The parks are easily identifiable, actually, because yep. the border is a light blue color. So I can always tell when I have three parks, but the rest of the rooms have a white border with color in, inside. And I just wish that the borders of the tiles replicated the color of the room. I'm a visual person. Yep. You're, you have two castles in front of you. So to be able to quickly analyze and see what you have, seeing those three colors vibrantly in your inner view mm -hmm. would just make it exponentially better for me. Yeah, I think if anybody has trouble seeing, yeah. like me, I'm like squinting like, what is that? The colors do like help. I, I can identify them pretty quickly. But yeah, I don't know. I think the icons are very, very tiny. The tiles are very the, small. They, the tiles are small. So just having that added would be, I think, really, really helpful yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah. Outside of that, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I like puzzle games. I like tile placement games. But this one, I think, was too puzzly for me. I just didn't connect with it. And I found myself just getting frustrated in general. That being a big frustration. Me constantly being like, oh, I missed this bonus. I missed this bonus. I missed this bonus. And it's kind of too late. Like once you've placed tiles and stuff, yeah, like Jamie could be like, oh, we'll just grab the bonus tile. Sure. But then you've already built your castle to a certain like degree, right? Yep. So that was my biggest frustration. And I think... Other than that, like, I don't know, the more I've thought about it, I think there is a place for me to enjoy this game, but it's just, it did not hit 
that well yeah. for me. I really like this game. I, I really enjoy the puzzliness of it. I definitely think that your level of enjoyment is going to depend on who you're playing it with. 100%. Like if you're playing with somebody who's like really into puzzles and stuff like that, I can see you like working really collaboratively being like, oh, like what about this or what about this? Whereas like if you're playing with people who are like, eh, I don't really care about it, then you are just going to do the place and whatever. I think that's a fair point. If to play yeah. this game with somebody who is like as excited about this as Lance was about Lost Runes of Arnak, I think it would just be so fun. Yeah, that's a good point. Like in our plays, two player, three player, four player, yep. it was never like this overly enthused, like involved no, experience. No, the first time like we were tired, Jason was mm -hmm. beat down from the, the fail of the trail, yeah. Western Trail. <laughs> and and that's not the game's fault. No, that's not the game's means. fault. And I think you were probably tired that night. I think Acacia and I did pretty well in hours. Yeah. It's also a bit of a struggle. And I think here's the other thing is that a lot of the games that we played were always playing with somebody who's learning the game. And this is a not a hard game to learn, but frustrating to learn because of all the symbols and the scoring and, you know, well, I didn't know this and I missed this and that's frustrating. And I think playing it a few more times with a few with people who have played it would be a totally different experience. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, this is a great cottage game. It is. And I want to like this game, and I don't dislike this game. I'm in a lukewarm spot with it. I'm never going to jump to play it, but it's also one of those games that I'm like, I can guarantee you, I'll be like, I want to try that again. Yep. I don't really know why. If I could identify the tiles better, mm -hmm. it would change the whole experience for me, mm -hmm. uh, for the better. What I would say is, this game is not for you if you don't like puzzles. If you don't like puzzly games, do not, this is not for you. Don't do it. That's pretty much it for me from a critique standpoint. I just really struggle with the colors yep. on the tiles. I really struggle with that. I'd be really interested to know what this game would be like as it's just a competitive game without that semi-co-op piece. Just to be like, hey, I'm working on this thing. Like you have your own? Yeah. And you're like, you can hate draft. <laughs> I wonder. I anyway. wonder if that's one of the other two. Maybe that's how the other two, one of Maybe. the other two works. Yeah, I don't really have a ton of critique on top of what Jeff has said, but I do think this game, 100%, your level of enjoyment is determined by who you're playing with and how comfortable you are with the game, how familiar you are with the iconography and the rules. And I guess once you could say that about every game, though. The group you play with, how familiar you are with the rules. Yeah, but everybody has fun playing Sheepy Time, even if it's the first time. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, those are those are our critiques. And like, I do really, really like this game. Is this like a top 10 game for me at this point? No, but I'm gonna drop my phone. who knows, maybe someday. Final thoughts. I think I was harsher on it. We just played this again yesterday. Very harsh on it last night. Uh, at two player and I was very hard on it. Very, very hard on it. Mm -hmm. I left that play being like, I don't ever want to play this game again. In retrospect, I think a lot of the problems are not the game's problems. They're my issues. Mm. It's an attention to detail thing that I struggle with. And I struggle with that. That's a really good point. In a lot of what I do in life. I just have scatterbrain. And so when I am not assisted on things like seeing color vibrantly or easily, I'm going to struggle with a game. Yep. So after that play last night, I was frustrated. And I was like, ah, I just, I can't get this to connect with me. But then I thought about it this morning and I knew we were doing this review. And I'm like, you know what? Like, you know, 80% of those issues are a me thing. Do I wish that the game came with better colored tiles? Yes. Is that really a huge issue to be mad at the game about? No, I don't think it is. Yeah. I think the game mechanically plays really well. It's a great puzzle if you like puzzles. And it's definitely something I would want to play with a group of friends that enjoy puzzles. Because yeah. I do think I agree with you. It would be exponentially better with people that bought into that like yeah. cooperative competitive nature of things i don't tend to lean towards the cooperative nature of things in games anyway mm -hmm. so i think this this game was behind the eight ball to start my final thoughts are i enjoy this game i definitely it's not a game that i want to get rid of by any means i do agree that this would make a fantastic cottage game for that one day when we buy a cottage on the lake or the someday. ocean someday. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is either. That, because like that makes that a game that is it thing puzzly for me. Games? Yeah, I think it is because, because we're like patchwork. This one. So yeah, Sabrata. like yeah, it's a middle of the road game for me. Mm -hmm. Not a love. What don't hate you, it. What 
rating would you give it, Jeffrey? I think I was a bit too harsh last night when you asked me that question. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably like a six for me. Yeah, I was thinking probably 6.57. It's not a love, but it's a life. I think I would grow to it like would grow, this. It would yeah. grow on me the more I, I agree. played it. Those are our thoughts on Between Two Castles of yeah. Mad King Ludwig. That king, he do be mad though. Let us know down below if you have played this game or if you've played the two original games. We would love to know your thoughts. There it goes. That's the third time and you didn't That's learn either time. it actually fell though. You didn't learn any of the times. Hopefully it didn't break. Let us know if you've played any of the variations of this game. We would love to know. If you are interested in purchasing this game, you should definitely start by checking out your friendly local gaming store. For us here in Halifax, it is the Boardroom Game Cafe. How do you say all that without taking a breath? Very, very fast. I talk all day, that's my job. Definitely check out the Boardroom Game Cafe if you're in Halifax. All of their information will be underneath Jeff's little dangly finger and down below. Ugh, get that out of here. We have a Discord and we would love for you to join us on that Discord and talk to us via GIF and talk to us about all of the things like movies and food and pets and what else have we talked about lately? All I'm going to say is we have a GIFs only channel. Yeah. But and every if, channel it seems to be a GIFs yeah. only channel. And if you jump in the GIFs only channel and you accidentally type words. Jim. People going to be at you. Jim. You're going to get you. the Barbie GIF. I don't even think Jim noticed. That's fine. Jim can do it. We love you, Jim. Wants. We you, love you, Jim. You have free reign to do free anything reign. you want. Exactly. Just don't be a meanie or a weenie he, in the Discord. He wouldn't. He would never. Yeah, we love Jim. So yeah, definitely join us on Discord. We have a great time in there. Don't be afraid to jump into any chat. It may seem chaos because Leanne's just throwing out fire Elmos. Yeah. But other than that, it's just good kind of chaos. Yeah. We also have a Patreon if you're interested in supporting us. All of that information will be down below as well. Feel free Indeed. to join us on social media. We have Instagram and Twitter at Foster the Meeple. And other than that, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing to us here at Foster the Meeple. You can click the little red subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up, all that good stuff. Yep. But that's all that we have for you guys today. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say... Later it is. Goodbye. Later it is. You think I broke the phone? Probably. Ugh. That wasn't me farting. That was the phone. Little Miss, Little Miss, Little Miss, Little Miss, can't be wrong. Is that a song about me? Uh, yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone, and welcome back to Foster the Meeples. Foster the Meeples. Foster the Meeples. The hair on my nose. It's upside down. I can't read. Do you know, I've been... Okay, let's... <laughs> cut all of that out. That's inappropriate. Because you irked, like, cooperative that... Yeah. <laughs> Get that garbage out of here. Get that corn out of my face. Get that corn out of my face. Get that corn out of my face.